Hello children, in this video we are going to revise entire chapter of refraction like it plane surfaces. So before going to start a revision day children, let us recall what are the topics which we have in this chapter. Children, in this chapter mainly we have all about what is a refraction and a loss of refraction, refractive index, factors affecting the refractive index. Then we will be having refraction through glass lab and refraction through prism. After that, we will be discussing about what is the real depth, what is the apparent depth, how real depth and apparent depth are related and how they are related to the even shift also. Then we will be having total internal reflection. Then we will be discussing about total reflecting prisms in a different cases. Children, first let us start what actually refraction is. Children, if you want to understand the term called refra refraction, first you should know what is the difference between what is actually rarer medium what actually denser medium let us see what is a rarer medium the teacher the medium in which speed of the light is more speed of the light is more when compared with other medium is called rarer medium then what about denser medium the medium in which speed of the light is less when compared with other medium diction without comparison we cannot come to the conclusion whether it is a given one is a rarer medium or denser medium. Let us take a case of water day children. When compared with air, it is a denser medium. Whereas, when compared with the glass, it is a rarer medium. Now, we will see what will happen when light travels from rarer to denser medium and even what happens when light travels from denser to rarer medium. Let us see the case one day children. In front here is a light is incidenting like this. Incidenting like this. Such as that this will be what day children? angle of incidence or suppose in this case light is moving from air to water light is moving from air to water so here air is a rarer medium water is a denser medium teaching as we already we discussed denser medium means what in which light travels slower rarer medium light travels faster so here what happens the moment light enters from rarer to denser medium it slows down this is very very important as it is slowing down, what will happen? It will move, it will bend towards the normal, towards the normal. The children, if there was no water, just assume for a while, there was no water, then what happened here? This light would have traveled along a straight line path, would have traveled along a straight line path. But as it is moving from rarer to denser medium, it slows down, due to which it moves towards the normal. It moves towards the normal. So, this will be the refractive light ray and this the angle between refractive light ray and the normal is called angle of refraction. Children if you can observe here you can notice one very important thing is here angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction. It is very very important. So whenever light travels from rarer to denser medium rarer to denser medium what happens angle of incidence will be greater than the angle of refraction. It is very very important. Now let us see what happens when light travels, let us say case 2, in case 2 where light is moving from denser medium to rarer medium and let us consider light is coming and falling, it is a incident light ray such way that this will be the angle of incidence. Dear children, whenever light travels from, moves from water to air, what will happen? It speeds up, it speeds up, due to which what happens dear children? It moves away from the normal. So here if there was no second medium as usual, light would have traveled along a straight line path. Nature, as long as the medium is same, light travels in a straight line path. The moment when medium changes, then only what will happen? The light is deviating its path. That, this is the important part which we have to notice. So as it is moving from denser to rarer medium, it moves away from the normal. So this is refractive light ray. This is refractive light ray and this will be the angle of refraction but in this case dear children angle of refraction is greater that is angle of incidence is angle of incidence is less than angle of refraction angle of refraction so dear children this is how actually uh, light uh, deviates light bends at the interface between two mediums when it moves either from rarer to denser or denser to rarer this phenomena only we can call it as a refraction of light so let us recall once what actually refraction of light. Children, when light travels from one transparent medium to 
another transparent medium what is happening it bends it bends at the interface between the two mediums it is called refraction of light but dear children what is the refraction what the, what is the cause of the refraction is very important what is the reason what is the reason why light is bending when it travels from one transparent medium to another transparent medium so children you have to write that due to the change in speed of light this is very very important what is the cause of refraction what is the cause of the refraction just speed in this change in speed of light change in speed of light only causes the refraction of light dear children during refraction one very important thing is that frequency remains constant it's very 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 important frequency remains constant whether light is moving from rarer to denser or denser to rarer what will happen frequency because frequency depends on the uh, source of light it is a characteristic property of the source of light so as long as the source of light remains same dear children the frequency remains same so in exam they may ask the question during the refraction which of the following physical quantities will remain same so you have to write the frequency and during the refraction here dear children speed change things will change these things will change so we should have idea during the refraction frequency will change whereas due, sorry frequency does not change it remains constant whereas during the refraction speed wavelength intensity these things will change which is this is what actually refraction now we'll see case where refraction cannot occur just copy it let us see a special case where light is incident normal to the surface what is going to happen actually it's very important very 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 important so let us take here is interface between the two mediums interface between the two medium and here this will be the normal rod this is the so here if light is incidenting that is light is going along the normal then what is angle of incidence angle of incidence zero angle of incidence zero so this one we can call it as a normal incidence this one we can call it as a normal incidence so what will happen when light incidence normal to the surface so whether it is moving from rarer to denser or denser to rarer children denser whether it is moving from rarer to denser or denser to rarer whatever it may be if it is incidenting normal to the surface then light will go without deviation light will go without deviation so in this case refraction cannot occur so it's very very important what happened in exam they may ask the question when light incidence normal to what are normal to the surface what is the angle of incidence angle of incidence is zero and what about angle of refraction angle of refraction is zero only so here there is no deviation there is no deviation and the one more very 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 important thing is that let us take the children okay it is means normal incidence it's okay there is no uh, deviation there is no refraction children here okay here is x y is a interface between the two mediums and here m n is a normal rod m n is a normal rod and here is light rays incident like this light rays incident there dish so here one more very important thing let us say the first medium and it is the second medium second medium for example dear children mu 1 is a refractive index of first medium and mu 2 is a refractive index of second medium so don't get confused about refractive index we'll be revising next okay so here the condition is that if if the issue right if refractive index of first medium is equal to refractive index of second medium then what will happen you know this light ray will go undeviated this light ray will go undeviated which means what if the refractive index of the two transparent mediums is same then what will happen light will go undeviated which means what here refraction is not occurring so dear children so there are the two special cases where what will happen light is moving from one transparent medium to another transparent medium but refraction cannot occur just copy it down. refraction loss of refraction so children let us take a case where re what is this first uh, what a law of refraction give information according to first law of refraction dear children pq is a incident ray incident ray whereas rs is a refractive light ray and mn is a normal rod all will be lying in the same plane at a point of incidence all will be lying in the same plane at a point of incidence whereas second point is very very important 
so it has so much of significance so much of significance so it says that the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction let us say so the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always remains constant always remains constant but condition is that for a given pair of mediums for a given pair of mediums for a given pair of actually it's very very important so what the second law of refraction says it says that the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is always constant is always constant but it is constant for given pair of mediums only given pair of mediums dictionary this only we can call it as a snell's law this one we can call it as snell children is not smell's law don't replace n with m that will be no smell's law it is not existing it is the snell's law okay so in exam directly they ask the question state snell's law so you have read this okay it's fine and here this constant only is a given a special name called refractive index it will be called as a refractive index so now we will discuss actually what a refractive index refractive index and what are its units and on which factor does it depend so we will represent with the u so children mathematical form of snell's law means we can write like this so it is mu is equal to sin i by sin r so this is a refractive index of second medium the first medium is the second medium so it is very important second medium with respect to first medium so try to understand so in which medium light ray is getting refracted second medium from which medium it is traveling initially first medium so you can see that refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium so this is what actually mathematical form of snell's law so children come to the refractive index so how can we define children look at here so mu is equal it is defined as c by v what is c here the speed of the light in a vacuum or air and the v is what the speed of the light in a particular medium so the ratio of the speed of the light in a particular vacuum to the speed of light in a particular medium is called refractive index children it is also called absolute refractive index it is called actually absolute refractive index which means what when you are comparing when you are calculating with respect to the uh, refractive index of air or a vacuum that we can take it as a absolute refractive index children then what are the units if you can look at here it is a ratio of same two physical quantities that is speed by speed only so definitely what will happen the units will get cancelled so it has no unit so it's very important it has no units refractive index has no units it's very very important and one more important thing dear children refractive index is always greater than 1 always greater than it can never be less than 1 it can never be less than 1 why refractive index can never be less than one is important point actually if you can look at the ratio it is a ratio of c and v and we know very well that c is always very much greater than v so here yeah, numerator is numerator is always greater than the denominator so then definitely what will happen is children here mu value always greater than 1 dear children so we know that c value c is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second, and it always remains constant for air or a vacuum. That you know very well. That you know very well. It is always constant. As its concentration, and so mu is inversely proportional to the v. Mu is inversely proportional to v. So which means what, dear children? If refractive index is more, speed of the light is less. If refractive index is less, then refractive index what? Uh, speed of the light is more. Which means what? For a denser medium, in a denser medium, if mu value is more, means what? It is a dense, optically denser, denser medium only. So in a denser medium, light will travel with a less speed. If mu value is less, it behaves like a optically rarer medium, in which speed of the light is more. This is how actually we can make a relation between mu and v. It's very important. Now, dear children, let us see. So how can we make a relation between the refractive index of the two mediums? to the speeds of light in that two different mediums for suppose dear children so let us say here is xy is a border between the two mediums and here is a normal so light is moving so it has to go like this so let us take in this normal case one which we have taken so the let us say first medium and the second medium in this 
the light is traveling with the V1 velocity in this, the light is traveling with the V2 velocity. And the refractive index of first medium is a V1 and the refractive index of second medium is V2. So as we know that it is mu is inversely proportional to V ratio then. So here, what can we uh, write here? We can write it as a mu1 by mu2 is equal to v2 by v1. This is in shortcut we are writing. So this is how actually we can make a relation between. We can make a relation between. So this mu1 by mu2 is what actually? This is relative refractive index. Children, it's a relative refractive index. Means refractive index of one medium with respect to refractive index of another medium. It's very, very important. Now we will see on which factors does the refractive index depend and how does it depend on very, very important. How does it depend also very very important. So here let us say factors on which refractive index factors let us say at the rate refractive index. First one which it is nature of the medium very very important. So refractive index depends on the nature of medium nature of the medium it is very very important. Let us take vision and let us take a so here light will travel the different speeds in a different medium. Why? They all are different in their optical density. All are different in optical density. So for A, the refractive index is 1. And for water, refractive index is approximately it is 1.33. For ferrous, for a glass, it is 1.5. So different mediums will have different refractive indexes. So that what will happen? Light will travel with the different speeds. And the second point, it depends on wavelength or color so it's very important wavelength or even color wavelength or color children here refractive index is inversely proportional to the wavelength so the color with in a particular medium in a particular medium the color with more wavelength will have less refractive index and whereas the color with the less wavelength will have more refractive index so because of this reason only mu v is greater than mu uh, what we can say red so for violet color refractive index is more than that of the red color then the third point is physical conditions that is the temperature in that especially we will discuss about the temperature children refractive index is inversely proportional temperature means more the temperature less the refractive index lesser temperature and more with the refractive index so dear children this is what actually what is the refraction and what is its value and about its units and on which factor it depends. So just copy it. Children, here now we will see its ability. Children, let us take a case again. Say in case let us take a refraction where light is getting refracted. So here is light is incident with the angle I. So it, it should be the version of the light ray. And light is moving like this. So it is the angle of refraction. Children, here what happens? When you put a mirror exactly like this, you put a mirror like this. Children, already we discussed in the case of light chapter. Whenever light incidents normal to the surface of the mirror, what will happen? It bounces back in the same path, means its path is retraced. So again, light will travel like this. Again, same path it is getting reversed. So this concept only we can call it as a principle of reversibility. It means when you reverse the direction of light. When you reverse the direction of light, it takes the same path along which it was coming previously. It is called actually principle of reversibility. So let us say here, mu1 is a refractive index first medium and the mu2 is a refractive index of second medium. So mathematically, how can we express it? It's very, very important. Here, refractive index of second medium, first medium, is the reciprocal of refractive index of first medium with respect to second medium. Children, based on this, we will be having a number. It's very, very important. Let us see one example given to the children. If, if, look at it, if with respect to glass. So here what they are saying in first case, they are asking us to find the refractiveness of glass with respect to water. So children, refractiveness of glass with respect to water, this we can write as a mu g by it is mu w. So mu g is given how much? It is given 3 by 2 by it is given 4 by 3. So water is 4 by 3 water is 4 by 3. So if you can do this simplification, you will get it as a 9 by 8 you will get. 9 by 8. This is the first one. Now second one, what they are saying? They are saying that refractive index of water with respect to glass. For this, you need to do the simplification. According to principle of reversibility, this can be written as 
refractiveness of glass with respect to water. So here how much we got here? It we got 9 by 8. So this will be 8 by 9. So dear children, so these kind of numericals we can expect based on the principle of reverse property. Just copy it. Next one, very very important thing is that how uh, light is going to get refracted through a glass slab and a prism. These two are very very important in children. So in that first we will discuss refraction through glass slab. Refraction through glass slab. Especially we are going to take it in the rectangular glass slab. We are going to discuss about rectangular glass slab. Make sure let us take here. Children, so this is A, B, C, D is a rectangular glass slab. Such a dilatation here, P, Q is a instant light ray. So that here is, I is the angular constraints. Children, here we have to notice one very important thing here. At the AB surface, it is the AB is a boundary between air and a glass. So initially light is moving from air to glass. That is what it is moving from rare to denser medium. Children, whenever light moves from rare to denser medium, what will happen? It slows down due to which it moves towards the normal. So this is how so here, this is how actually light is getting refracted. Such a dilatation. So this is a angle of refraction. Angle of refraction. So children, now at this point, if you can look at here. This is a DC is again interface between glass and air. By this condition, it is moving from glass to air, that is denser to rarer period. So due to which what will happen? It speeds up. So it moves away from the normal like this. So this is refractor light ray. So let us say PQ R S is a refractor light ray such a that this will be the angle of refraction and it should look at here. So this is called emergent light ray angle of emergence angle of children so very important pq is incident ray qr inside the light ray which is traveling inside of the glass which is called refractor light ray whereas rs is called emergent light ray such that e is angle of emergence children here important thing which we can notice what we can notice you know we can notice that first point very very important angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of emergence so which means what you children? So the angle with which it is incidenting on the glass slab is the same angle the light ray will emerge out. Which means what here? Glass slab is not producing any deviation. So it's a very very important examination point. They'll ask you what is the angle of deviation produced by the glass slab? You can say here angle of pro uh, deviation produced by the glass slab is zero. So here glass slab does not produce the deviation in the incident ray. What happened? Simply it can shift. Children here, this dotted line will represent what is children? Virginal path of the light ray. Means here if there was no glass lamp, light would have traveled along the straight line path. But here what is happening? Instead of going like this, just it shifts. So look at here, it is shifting parallel to itself. And it here, one more thing we can notice. What is that? So there will be some distance. Look at here. This is a distance between, perpendicular distance between Perpendicular distance between emergent light ray to the incident ray when it extended forward he is called lateral displacement. He is called lateral displacement. Should an exam they'll ask you what is a lateral displacement and on which factor lateral displacement depends? Lateral displacement depends. So lateral displacement. In exam, you know, uh, of course, in a diagram, look at it. X Y represents lateral displacement. X for lateral distance. What is the lateral displacement? The perpendicular distance between emergent light ray and incident ray when extended forward is called lateral displacement. Children, it depends on first, it depends on angle of incidence. How does it depend? Your lateral displacement is directly proportional to the angle of incidence. Means more the angle of incidence, more will be the lateral displacement. The second one, it also depends on the refractive index of the material with which glass slab is made. With which glass slab is made. So here, lateral displacement is directly proportional to the even refractive index. And the third one is that, so glass slab has a thickness, right? So lateral displacement even depends on that, or it gets a thickness also. So lateral displacement is directly proportional to the thickness of the glass slab. In these three cases, in these three factors are proportional to each other. But whereas fourth factor we'll look at here, it also depends on the children. So what is the color of the light is very important. Whether it is a red color or a violet color, green color, blue color. Which means what here? 
lateral displacement depends on the wavelength of the light used so yeah, lateral displacement is inversely proportional to the wavelength of the color used which means what for which color lateral displacement will be more natural than so for a violet color lambda is less so for a violet color lateral displacement will be more so lateral displacement is more for violet color than that of the red color so this is how how lateral displacement depends on this factor so question just copy it now we will see the refraction through prism so here yeah, refraction through a glass car now we will see detail what happens special detail we are going to take only monochromatic light we are not going to take a polychromatic light so that we will be discussing what happens when a polychromatic light passes through a prism that we will discuss in next session but in this session we are going to take a case where only monochromatic light is passing through the prism first let us consider a prism so here A B C is the equilateral prism which we are going to take the action such as the action here A B and A C are called refracting surfaces refracting surfaces whereas B C is called actually base of the prism so now it is light ray this is like this so this light ray will represent incident light ray let us say the PQ is a incident light ray is incident at this point and here is a normal drawing this dotted line represents its origin path which means what if there was no prism light would have traveled along a straight line path but dear children at this point Q let us say what is happening light is entering from air to glass that is rarer to denser so whenever light moves from rarer to denser medium what will happen children? it slows down due to which it bends towards the normal it bends towards the normal like this it bends towards the normal means again here from here to here the medium is safe so you can travel along a straight line path now at this point children let us make a normal let us make a normal here at this point let us say it's a point r this is a point r so at this point r light is moving from glass to air that is denser to rarer so it speeds up due to this detail line it moves away from the normal it moves away from the normal so this is called r s let us say so children pq is incident ray such a way that this will be the angle of incidence let us say i1 and rs is emergent light ray so this is called angle of emergence so this will be two and what we can say refracting and angle of refractions angle of refraction here some of you make it one doubt sir here uh, this refracted light ray inside the prism inside the prism light ray why it is not parallel to this face of the prism children it is not compulsory that the refracted light ray which is passing inside should be parallel to the base of the prism only it is not all the cases only in a minimum deviation condition only children it's very important only in a minimum deviation condition only what will happen the refracted light ray is parallel to the base of the prism okay it's very very important now dear children let us try to extend this emergent light ray back try to extend try to prolong this so you will get like this when you extend it back you will get like this so there will be angle look at here here you can notice this angle children so this angle only we can call it as a angle of deviation angle of children is very 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 important so in example they will ask the question what is angle of deviation dear children so the angle through which incident light ray gets deviated from its virgin path actually if there was no prism light would have traveled along this path straight line path but due to the presence of prism it is getting deviated this much angle this from its virgin path is called angle of deviation now we will see on which factor does the angle of deviation depends and before the day children how angle of incidence angle of emergence and angle of refractions are related it's very very important dear children if this here you can notice here is one angle this is what actually the angle between two refracting surfaces is called angle of the prism children look at here so the sum of the angle of incidence and angle of uh, in, uh, emergence is always equal to the angle of the prism and angle of deviation first one and whereas dear children uh, the angle of the prism always equal to the sum of the angle of refraction sum of the angle of refraction but dear children in in minimum deviation conditions very very important in minimum deviation condition in minimum deviation position children as i told in minimum deviation position how this light ray will be this refracted light ray will be parallel to the base of the prism so this light ray will become exactly parallel parallel to the base of the prism. in that condition dear children right here 
I1 is equal to I2 means both will be same. Let us say I1 I2 equal to I only. Whereas R1 and R2 are equal to the R only. Now you can substitute this. If you can sub, let us say the first equation and this will be the second equation. Okay. From first equation, what can be addition? It will be I plus I is equal to A plus delta M we should take. Why? It's a minimum deviation condition. It's a minimum deviation position. So from this we can write here I is equal to A plus delta M by 2. So this is how actually we can calculate the angular constraints. Whereas from second equation addition, if you can look at here, A is equal to will be R plus R. So this will become 2R. Then R is equal to A by 2. R is equal to A by 2. So this is how we can calculate angular constraints at angular refractation, especially in a minimum deviation condition we are talking. In a minimum deviation condition, this refractive light ray must be parallel to the base of the prism. So you know, once let us recall the uh, Snell's law here. Mu is equal to sin i by sin r. Sin i by sin r. In the place of i and r, you can put these values. So what do you get here? Mu is equal to sin of uh, a plus delta m by 2 to the sin a by 2. So children, this is a formula to calculate the what is children refractive index of the given prism. So this is how we can calculate the refractive index of the given prism. Just you copy it. Now we will discuss the factors affecting angular deviation. So factors affecting angular deviation. It's a very very important. It's a angular deviation. So let us recall what is the angular deviation. The angle through which incident light ray gets deviated from its virginal path is called angular deviation. Okay, so fine. So children, first let us see how does it depend on angle of the prism. Children, angle of deviation is directly proportional to the angle of the prism. Means more the angle of the prism, more will be the deviation. Less angle of the prism, less will be the angle of deviation. And the second one is that angular deviation is also proportional to the refractive index region. So it depends very, very, very important. What will be the refractive index? Whether it is a more means definitely light ray gets deviated more. The refractive index of the prism with which it is made is a less means light ray gets deviated less only. Okay, so fine. The third one is one more very, very important thing is that wavelength of the light used. Wavelength of the light used. Whether are we going to use, as I said that, it is only with the monochromatic light. Whether it is a red color or a violet color, all these things are very, very important. So here, yeah, angle of deviation is inversely proportional to wavelength. So that's what it should learn because this reason only, a deviation for violet color is more than that of the deviation of red color. So very, very important. This can be connected to even one more question also. Which is the fourth one. Actually, this we should discuss first. is very, very important. What is that? Let me discuss here. The fourth one. Actually, this should be the first actually. Is angle of incidence. It is angle of incidence. Angle of incidence. So, how does it depend on angle of incidence? Children, as like this, we cannot say whether directly is a proportion or inversely proportional. Why? Means in a different manner, angle of deviation varies. So, initially what happens, you know, dear children, when you go on increasing angle of incidence, slowly angle of deviation decreases and takes some minimum value and further on increasing the angle of incidence, again it increases, again it decreases. Children here in the exam especially they will ask us to draw the graph angle of deviation versus angle of incidence. Very very important. Look at here how the graph is going to be. Children here angle of incidence is taken on x axis whereas angle of deviation is taken on y axis. Then we will get a graph like this. So like this we will get a graph. So children, this point, so this point will be what is children, minimum deviation position. You must show this with a delta minimum, delta minimum. So when you go on increasing initial angle of incidence, children, initially when the angle of incidence increases, angle of deviation decreasing, taking minimum value. And further from here to here, you can see, when from here we are increasing the angle of incidence, then what is happening? Angle of deviation also increases. Okay, children. So these are the factors on which angle of deviation depends. Just copy it. Real depth and up and down. Dick children, what will be that? Let us take here. Very important. Thing, let us take one container. Let us take one container in which water is taken. And let us place here one coin in it. Let us place one coin in it. 
children it is air and it is a water and water from air we will be absorbed no doubt about it we will be in air only and we will be absorbed in the coin which is placed in the water means the denser medium from where we are observing we are observing from rarer medium the children when we observe that object which is placed in the denser medium as we are from rarer medium what happens you know this coin appears as if it is raised so this coin appears to be here this coin is appears to be. so here the image is formed actually here the image is formed try to understand so this is object children and this will be the image so this happens just due to the refraction of light only this we can call it this is just because of what it should be refraction of light only children the depth at which actually object is placed is called real depth try to understand it is called real depth whereas the depth at which image is appeared to be formed is called apparent depth is called apparent depth now dear children if you can notice here the image is appears to be raised to a certain height is called shift is called shift children this they are very very important means real depth means what is the original depth at which actual object is placed apparent depth when we are observing from uh, rarer medium it appears to be raised means from top this height we can take as a apparent depth and this will be what dear children this will be the actual shift now we will see how apparent depth and real depth are very very important dear children even Uh, we discuss about refractive index. Of course, refractive index is C by B, and refractive index is called even sine I by sine R also. Even refractive index can be defined in terms of apparent depth and real depth also. Children, here mu is equal to we can define as real depth by apparent depth. Real depth by apparent depth. Dear children, based on this also we will be having the numericals. How example? Example, if coin is placed at a certain depth so that the coin is appears to be 10 cm depth let us say and the refractive index of water is 4 by 3 then they'll ask us to calculate real depth then they'll ask us to calculate real depth then how to calculate here real depth is equal to mu into ad so this is 4 by 3 into 10 so this is going to be 40 by 3 so this is 3 ones are, i think 13.3 approximately i'm talking So thirteen point three will be the real depth. Dear children, so if apparent depth and refractive index is given, how to calculate the real depth of that object which is a place? So this is what actually closer is. So this is how we can define. Children, even sometimes they will ask us to write the formula directly. How refractive index and real depth are related? Refractive index is equal to children the real depth by apparent depth. But dear children, if if real depth and apparent depth both are given children so three formulas very very important which we have to notice first one second one if re real depth is known apparent depth is known how to calculate the shift very simple real depth minus apparent depth you will get so here shift is equal to shift is equal to real depth minus apparent depth real depth minus apparent which will in the place of apparent depth okay ma you can put real depth by mu value then we will get even Shift is equal to shift is equal to real depth into one minus one by mu. So children, here we have these are three formulas very very important. So based on these three formulas, definitely we can expect the numericals. So which will find now on which factor does the shift depends is very very important. On which factor shift depends? On which factor does the shift depends? Children, the first point is that it depends on the this thickness. thickness of this denser medium thickness of the denser medium so more the thickness more the shift will be there so thickness it depends on the thickness and the second one it also dictionary depends on the refractive index of this medium refractive index of the medium so here more the refractive index more the shift less the refractive index of the medium less will be the shift and third one is very 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 important is that shift is Inversely proportional to the wavelength of the light used. So more the wavelength, less the shift. Less the wavelength, more the shift. So because of this only, children, shift. Which color will get shifted more? Violet color. So shift for violet color is more than that of the shift for red color. Shift for red color. So dear children, so these are the actually the reaction mu is equal to R d by a d. Shift is equal to R d minus a d. 
and this shift, this formula which we will use only when re real death and a mu value is which we don't get confused the different formulas between these two difference between these two. This formula is used when real depth and apparent depth is known. But sometimes apparent depth won't be given. Then we have to go for this. Shift is equal to real depth into 1 minus 1 by mu. And these are the factors on the shift pairs. Children, so in this topic only, it's very important thing is that they will ask us to make a ray diagram. Means when any object is placed, whether it is an object or any pencil is placed in a uh, water or in a liquid, so it appears as if it is rays. So they will ask us to make a ray diagram. So let us see. We will make two cases each other. Let us see the first we will make for coin case. So here what will happen when a coin is placed means we all know that it appears to be rays. Now let us see how to make a ray diagram for that. Children, here is coin is placed. Children, so the object which is placed is rays. From there you take a two light rays teacher. Two letters, let us take two letters. Children, uh, this is the first light ray. And this is second light ray. Children, first light ray as this is normal, normal in sense. So it will go undeviated. First light ray will go undeviated. But where is second light ray children? As it is moving from water to air, that is density to radial medium, obviously what happens, you know, it moves away from the normal. It moves away from the normal. Now here, this is the first refractor light ray, second refractor light ray. These two are not meeting. Then what we have to do? We have to extend this light ray back. Extend light ray back. So, this is the point where image is appeared to be formed. Where image to be appeared to be formed. So, this is how we should make a red diagram for a coin when it is placed in the water. So, sometimes uh, they will ask us to make a red diagram when a stick or a pencil is a place in our water. So, it bends. So, they will ask us to make that diagram. So, let us see once. So children, this is a pencil, let us say. So from this point, children, let us consider two letters like this only. Let us take two letters. So children, first letter will go as usual undeviated. First letter will go as usual undeviated. Why? It is normal in sense. Whereas look at here, second letter. The second letter. So let us make here normal, children. Let us make here normal. So this letter will go away from the normal. So these letters are not beating at all. So when you extend back, dear children. So when you extend back, so this light ray appears to be here. So this is a point, dear children, where this image. Let me look at here. That's good. Now let us try to connect. Another the virtual image. So it should be with the dotted line only. It should be with the dotted line only. It should be with the dotted line. So this is how actually uh, the stick or any pencil when it is placed in the water appears to be as if it is bending and appears very shorter. Okay, children. This is just because of refraction only. Children, definitely these kind of questions we can expect in the exam. Just copy it. Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. So children, what are the conditions means when a light ray will undergo total internal reflection is very important. The first condition is that so children, so if any light ray will obey these two conditions that is it has to go from denser medium to rarer medium and similarly the angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle then what will happen that light ray will undergo total internal reflection children let us take here is a case so let us see the boundary between the mediums such as it is air air okay and here is the water so obviously water is a denser medium when compared with the air so here an object is there so, let us say here the O is an object. From here, we have taken three light rays. The first light ray, the second light ray, and this is going to be the third light ray. The first light ray, as is a normal incidence, obviously it will go undeviated only. So, it will go undeviated. So, no need to think about this light ray. It always will go undeviated only. But, children, so second light ray here, what will happen, you know? Look at here. So what is critical angle? Just we are going to discuss in a short cut, children. So for this particular angle of incidence, children, the light will go along the, the angle of incidence for which for which refractive light is going along the normal. That is going grazes the surface is called actually critical angle. So for this angle, region, for this angle only, for this angle only, let us say the IC angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. 
angular refraction given and take. So just I am talking about critical angle. We are not going in depth about total reflection. Just we recall what actually critical angle is. The angle of incidence in a denser medium. Please write down. It's very very important. The angle of incidence in a denser medium for which angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called critical angle. Then what happens when light, for example, here is incidence? Obviously, children, look at here. Obviously. So as IC is a critical angle and this angle will be greater than IC, no doubt about it, which means what? Your angle of incidence is greater than critical angle. Then what will happen, you know, instead of getting refraction, the light ray bounces back into the same medium. The light ray bounces back into the same medium. This phenomenon only we can call it as a total internal reflection. Total internal reflection. Children, what is the critical angle? The angle of incidence for which, the angle of incidence is a denser medium for which angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called critical angle. Children, very very important, the three condition which we have. What is the first condition? If angle of incidence is less than critical angle, then what will happen? Normal refraction can take place. Refraction can take place, very important. Where is the second case? If angle of incidence is equal to critical angle, then here we will have a confusion. Because light is going, it is great as the surface. The first let me write it grazes the surface it grazes the surface but it should, still it is refraction only still it is refraction it's very very still it is refraction so in exam they'll ask the question what is the minimum angle of incidence to occur refraction i repeat once what is the minimum value of angle of incidence to occur refraction this is what critical angle means till critical angle refraction can occur then what happens third point third one what happens if angle of incidence is greater than critical angle? Then total internal reflection can occur. Total internal reflection can occur. So this is what actually total internal reflection and the condition. And these three are very important. We can explain for one more question. Just copy it. So now we'll see the on which factor does the critical angle depends and how is it related to the refractiveness. It's very, very important. And once again, just look at here, Richard. this uh, picture just will give you complete information what actually critical angle is. So here what is happening here, light is traveling from denser to rarer medium such as that here angle of incidence is equal to critical angle which means what dear children, the angle of incidence in a denser medium for which angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called critical angle. This is what actually we can define critical angle and dear children, so critical angle mainly depends on here, look at here, it depends on wavelength or color, it depends on wavelength or color of light used means i can see that here more the wavelength more the critical angle less the wavelength less the critical angle so here for a red color critical angle will be more than that of the violet color this is what actually first factor on which it depends and yet the second factor is that each one critical angle is also depends on temperature it also depends on temperature it also depends on temperature means more the temperature means for a given two pair of mediums the critical angle will be more whereas if the temperature is less means what for a given pair of mediums the critical angle will be less but it shouldn't how actually critical angle is related to the refractive index of the medium so did you look at here it is a denser medium and it is a rarer medium for this picture dear children here angle of incidence will be the critical angle so here angle of incidence will be the critical angle but angle of refraction is how much? Angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. Now let us recall one Snell's law. So we know that is a refractive index. Children. So refractive index is equal. We know that actually the second medium with respect to first medium is actually it is sin i by sin r. Sin i by sin r. So let us say it is the first medium and the second medium. Now dear children, this, this uh, we can write like it's a mu. 2 1 is equal to sin a by sin r whereas mu 1 2 is equal to sin r by sin on sin r by sin a so this we can add as a mu 1 2 is equal to sin r by sin i sin r by sin a this will let us say here it is the second medium is a air then its refractive index is 1 whereas the first video then the denser medium refractive index let us take it as a mu only now you substitute this we can write as a mu 1 by mu 2 is equal to sin r means to it is a sin 90 
by at a critical angle i is equal to c we have to substitute that will be it is sin c children mu 1 is equal to what mu only mu 2 is equal to what 1 that is mu by 1 will be mu only so what are we getting finally mu is equal to it is 1 by sin c 1 by sin c so this is how actually critical angle and the refractive index are related so with this we can say that critical angle is inversely proportional to the refract so this is what actually critical angle and on which factor does it depend and how is it related to the refractive index just copy it now we will discuss total reflecting prism this is a last important topic in this chapter of refraction of data plane surfaces so total reflecting prism the important thing which we notice is that in which one angle is 90 degrees so that other two angles are 45 degrees each and here the important thing is that on which principle on what base actually total reflecting prisms will work Literally, the principle involved in it is total internal reflection so children total internal reflection means we need to recall two conditions when light ray will undergo total internal reflection the first point is that light must travel from denser medium to rarer medium that is the first point the second one is that children, angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle so there are the two conditions should be obeyed then only what will happen light ray will undergo total internal reflection now let us see what is the purpose of actually use of total reflecting prism the first day children in first case what we are going to use, say here total reflecting prisms are used to deviate the light ray through 90 degrees in that case we will take first so it is first one so in which what is happening let us say children here so let us name it a b c children the speciality of this total reflecting prism is that if any light ray is incident in normal to any surface will undergo total internal reflections very very important now look at here children so now here a b is a surface so that this will be additional here is a 90 degrees and this will be 45 degrees and this also 45 degrees only actually. now look at here a light is incident like this so it is normal incidence now what will happen we already learned whenever light incidents normal to the surface it will go undeviated so from here to here light will go undeviated only but it should at this point at this point let us at this point what is happening light is moving from denser to rarer medium that is one condition is uh, obeyed here now let us see what is the angle of incident at this point children children this is 90 degrees so this is 45 then obviously children so this will be 45 degrees only 45 degrees only so the what we can say the critical angle for a glass air interface glass air interface is 42 degrees only for a glass air interface is 42 degrees only so at this point what is happening to children light is moving from glass to air and at the same time angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle then what will happen at this point light will undergo total internal reflection so here this is how actually light will get totally internally reflected so as the uh, what a reflected light ray by default what will happen you know it will become normal to ac so it will go undeviated so this is how we can use total reflecting prism to deviate the light ray through 90 degrees which is this case we will use in a periscope just copy it case 2 where uh, light ray is to deviate used to deviate light ray through 180 degrees 180 degrees now look at here so children here is a here is b it is c such is the addition this will be 90 degrees so that these two angles are 45 degrees each 45 degrees each now dear children light ray is incending normal to this bc like this normal to this bc so what will happen this light ray as it is normal to bc dear children it will go undeviated so this will go undeviated like this so this is how it will undeviated but dear children, at this point look at here the angle of incidence it is 90 degrees it is 45 and this will be 45 now obviously this angle of incidence it is going to be dear children 45 degrees going to be 45 degrees so angle of incidence see at this point light is going from glass to air denser to radar and angle of incidence is greater than the 42 degrees then what will happen here it will get totally internal reflection it will go undergo total internal reflection 
So by default what will happen it will become parallel to this BC and at this point it will end. again let us make a normal here at this point it is trying to move from glass to air that is denser to rarer and this will be 45 degrees dear children and this will be 45 degrees now obviously if this angle of incidence also will be 45 degrees only so at this point also once again light will undergo total internal reflection so gets reflected and after total internal reflection dear children this light ray will become normal to bc so as it is normal to bc what will happen it will go undeviated so children this is how actually uh, light ray gets deviated through 180 degrees okay so this is a case which is used in a binaculars okay just copy it yeah this is the last case uh, in this total reflected prism so in this case it is used to erect the inverted image without deviation means here deviation won't be there rather what will happen so erected image can be inverted so very very important so look at here so it is a b c is a total reflecting prism such way that this is 90 degrees and here is 45 degrees each 45 degrees each dear children so here is a b is the object from this object a b from top the light ray first light ray is taken so this light ray is going like this at this point dear children normal leaf refraction will take place so this have actually first light ray path don't get confused and this is first light ray path dear children so here what will happen at this point let us say p it will undergo total internal reflection and it is going like this is the first path uh, for, for path to first light ray and the second light ray is taken from this point a d children look at here the second light ray is going like this your normal refraction will take place again it will go like this at this point a children total internal reflection takes place let us say it's a point q at a p and at point p and q total internal reflection takes place then it gets reflected back again at this point normal refraction will take place look at here so this is what actually how it is happening means first light ray just it is shifted as like a glass lab the actually it has to go like this just it gets shifted whereas second light ray has to go like this got shifted so here before the object is like this a b but the image is like this happening so this is how we can use to erect the inverted image without deviation which in their three cases are very 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 important for total reflecting prism so these are the topics from uh, refraction of light at a plane surfaces which we have covered in the next session we are going to just uh, do a you know uh, one shot video for a, uh, what we can say refraction at the curved surfaces that is the lens thank you so much all the very best